Uh, I don't know if you really need an introduction, but I'm I'm here with my now good friend Ewan. Hi. Hi. How's it going? Oh well, you know, it's um at our respective houses, sitting here just having a conversation, like we <laughs> often do. Really? Yes, because it's this is how we do. Because we're just good friends. Stay in touch with your good friends uh, during this <laughs> the time. Yeah, well, important. being good friends, uh, I got to know, you know, first question I have to ask you, the world is socially distant. Things haven't really stopped for you, though. Like you are still, there are still projects being announced for you. You are clearly still working. How have things been going and what does your routine look like these days? Yes, I was working on a project in New York City uh, uh, for Netflix called Halston, and I was uh, uh, a, a t television series about the fashion designer Halston. Mm -hmm. And um, we were probably about six, seven weeks into shooting, what would have been about three and a half months shooting. And so we were shut down and uh, was luckily able to get back to California. Um, so that's sort of yet to be finished. And of course, at the moment, we don't know when or uh, whether there, in fact, we'll restart that in New York or somewhere else. But um, so in terms of actual work, that's when that ended, when I guess it was towards the end of March. Yeah. And then I've been back here and um, it's since been announced that I've been doing the I'm, I'm playing Jiminy Cricket in the in um, Guillermo del Toro's version of Pinocchio. And that that I had started working on before I left for New York. So that's some of that is recorded. Um, and of course, it's stop frame animation. So it's going to take them a, a great long time to, to make that film. Uh, but my first part of that, which is recording his dialogue, is sort of done. There may or may not be a song that needs to be recorded. I'm not sure that I'm at liberty to discuss that, uh, even though we're just privately you. talking, you know? Just us, <laughs> good friends. Just the two of us. So um, <laughs> that's maybe yet to be done. And, um, and then, of course, there's a lot of thinking and preparation at least in my brain to be done for for the Obi Wan series, which we'll we'll shoot. Um, hope you know, hopefully early next year. Oh. Sorry, Broshi, it was just me knocking the table. <laughs> My little dog. Oh. oh, that was Broshi. She thought so I knocked the table for good luck, and she thought someone was at the door. <laughs> I think that's one adorable, and two um, little dogs are feisty, and I believe it. Yeah. Um, yeah. Okay, so I gotta ask you. You have all these things on the table. There's always this unusualness of like figuring out the day. Have you adopted any new habits since you know the beginning of social distancing? Are there any creative things that you figured out work for you while trying to keep up the pace with everything? Well, it's amazing how much time has passed, isn't it? It's already eleven or twelve weeks or something, and and at the beginning of it, of course. We didn't know how long it was going to last, but I, I, I sort of threw myself at lots of things all at once because I got home and like a lot of people, I have lots of things that I've planned to get to one day, you know, little jobs around the place, DIY stuff, gardening stuff, things like that, that, um, that I just sort of tackled very quickly all at once because I, I, didn't, I didn't anticipate we would be here for so long. But I would say what's changed is that I've... I've um, is everything. I can't imagine like moving forward in the same way after this. I think I've reestablished a sort of sense of um, enjoying just time and, and time at home, time with my family, with my loved ones. And everything's different. You know, I, I, I'm much better at waking up in the morning and maybe not having a plan for the whole day, you know. And before, I don't think I would have been very good at that because I'm sort of I've got a bit of a sort of workaholic streak in me where I've always liked to be working and with something to go on to. And this has really taught me to be able to just relax and enjoy the moment. So I, I, I think I don't have so much of a routine as such, but I think that's what's new is I don't have a plan really for the day, you know? Partly, like partly my two of my kids have been doing homeschooling on computers and like everybody in the country. So I've been sort of around for that and um, I've had to sort of my day is sort of a little bit organized around that their timetable so there's a sort of structure to it a bit but other than that just lots of 
lots of hobby stuff. You know, you I, I, I've had time to tinker with my old motorbikes and some old cars that I have, and um, do a bit of cycling and um, just enjoy. And doing a lot of stuff in the garden. I like I like sort of doing things in the, with the with the land. You know, my fingers are greener than they were when we started all this. Well, I mean, and it's really amazing. I, I honestly think that the funny thing is, like you've mentioned within like the first couple minutes of our very personal conversation that no one is clearly watching right now. Um, <laughs> two of the things that people are really excited about, which is you getting a chance to maybe perhaps non-confirmed sing in a movie that we won't mention maybe, and working with your motorbikes, which I think is absolutely amazing. But also you mentioned what I think everyone's like, biggest question besides when will you make an album uh which is the untitled obi-wan kenobi series um and it's it's really just such an amazing thing that folks folks remember star wars episode one the phantom menace as well as episode two and three came out it was really at the forefront of some really cool cinematic advancements and now over two decades later you're about to after you finish greening your thumbs and tinkering with your bike, go back into this massive project, uh, yeah. which is a new chapter in Obi-Wan Kenobi's journey. Um, do you feel like there were any really cool lessons that you're gonna bring with you into this new series? And I would remiss to ask, remiss not to ask, but no, you may not answer. Is there anything you can tell us about this new journey in Obi-Wan Kenobi's journey? No, there's nothing I could tell you, really. That would be the first bit. Um, Just for the record, I asked. I know, you know, you had to. I don't think, um, my, I was, uh, I, I'm trying to remember how old I was when we started the first one, but I was, you know, it was the mid to late 90s, I think. And um, when we shot episode one, I would just, uh, I'm just going to enjoy it all much more. You know, uh, I think our, our technology is such now that we, you know, we were, we were, I think we'd shot the first one on film and we shot the second one when we got to Australia on the new, then new HD cameras, which were sort of pr pretty primitive compared to what they are now. Um, and so it was quite techn technically, it was quite complicated, I remember. And it was just all blue screen and green screen. And so it was hard to, I'd, it was hard to imagine it, you know, but nowadays I think things have moved on so much. And I think a lot of our, I mean, a lot of, of, of what you see is, is going to be what we see on the, on the set. You know, you, I don't know if you've seen any of the um, Mandalorian, the behind the scenes of the Mandalorian series, but you know, they, they employ that incredible um, screen and, and I, I don't even begin to know how it works, but it's pretty amazing, you know? And so when you're on set, if it's, if you're in a snowscape or something, well, when you look around, you see that with your, and it makes you feel like you're in the place. I think it's gonna be more, uh, it's gonna feel realer for us, to, uh, for the actors. And I think we'll be using some of that technology on our, on our, on our show, which I, I don't know exactly, as you say, untitled as, as yet, but there's some great fan, ideas for it i don't know if you've seen some of the fan art but there's there's an amazing poster that where well, they've named it hello there that's the name of the movie you know <laughs> hello there the obi-wan kenobi story or whatever but it's that that would be fun i, I that would get my vote hello there i mean it's fun. kind of appropriate yeah yeah um, it would be good <laughs> But we'll see. I don't know. I don't know yet what it's going to be called. And I don't know. I have got, I, I do know sort of what it's going to be about, but I'm not going to tell you. No. For the record, again, I tried. Um, okay. Yeah. So you can't tell us anything about Obi-Wan Kenobi and this untitled Hello There musical, which is what it is in my head. <laughs> and it will be forevermore. Um, yeah. You do have a lot of other upcoming projects. You mentioned Pinocchio, where you were going to be playing the ever lovable Jiminy Cricket. Um, yeah. You are also in an animated adaptation of The Land of Sometimes. Can you tell us anything about that? That's been, no, I can't, because I don't know <laughs> very much about it yet. It's something that I'm excited to do. 
and I've been attached to do for a long time, but I don't know quite how close we are to doing that. I'm not sure. I haven't got very much to tell you about that, I'm afraid. As opposed to the other one who I know quite a lot about, but I won't tell you this one I don't know very much about, so I can't tell you. I mean, at least you're being fair and you're treating everyone equally. I don't know. <laughs> okay, so let's take a step back. Okay. You played a lot of different roles. You have been hero, villain, lover, fighter, and most recently, as I just mentioned, you're going to be playing like a beloved, another beloved childhood character. Um, is there any type of role or production that you're itching to do more of? Would you like to try your hat at it the future that you haven't had a chance to do yet? I feel like this is a very narrow lane. Yeah. Look, I I, um, I was lucky enough to direct a movie some a few years back called American Pastoral, and I loved that so much being in being uh, involved in all aspects of the filmmaking. I've always thought to myself as an actor as being a filmmaker. You know, you're involved in with all of the filmmaking departments in a movie, and over the years, certainly amassed a lot of experience on a film set and also a sense of how I like things to, how, what works for me on a film set and what doesn't, I suppose. And so I was able to sort of utilize all that experience and and um, direct a movie and I loved it so much. So I would definitely like to do that again. I I, I did, I realized that it's, it demands not only quite a lot of your time, but it just demands so much of your heart and soul and commitment which is similar to acting, but when you're acting, it's, you know, it can be three, four months at a time. Whereas with a movie, it's uh, when you're directing a movie, it's over a much longer period of time. And so I know that I couldn't, I couldn't just do it for the sake of doing it, but I would have to do it because it's a story that I really couldn't not tell. You know, it would have to be something you just need to do. And I'm sort of waiting for that story to find me. I'm not really looking for it, but I'm sure, I'm sure it, it, something will come up, come along, you know, um, and it could be really interesting. That was a, a film, uh, a very uh, classic film and a period film. And I, I, my instinct is that I should do something very different, that this, my second film should be something uh, more akin to train spotting, if you like, where young people uh, film, maybe I'm not in it, but I just direct it. And it should be more loose and urban and, uh, you know, less expensive and smaller and just fun. You know, I just can imagine that would be great fun with the, you know, get, I realized getting as a director, getting the right people around you to help you tell the story is so exciting. We're working with the actors and working with the DP and the designers. and It's just so exciting. So to get a really cool team of people that you like and maybe people you've worked with in the past that you respect and have a good uh, rapport with, it would just be the best experience in the world really so more of that i really i really am i think i'm probably it's probably true to say i'm more excited about playing obi One again now than i was even the first time because because it's just because you live and learn and the and and the more i uh the more I, I realize what i'm part of in a way i think at the time when you're young and you you know i just sort of treated it like yeah it's just another movie like all the other ones i'm making but now a bit of looking back on it you can see what you're you're involved in something quite huge you know in the star wars um the star wars um i don't like the word franchise but the star wars sort of fable or legend or whatever okay. you might call it and so this time to go back and to play to bridge that gap even more so between what I was trying to do in the first three films playing a young version of Alec Guinness. Well, now I'm closer in age to Alec Guinness when he did the first one. I mean, still not really nearly as old as he is, but was. Of course but, not. Um, no, no. Mm -hmm. I don't know. <laughs> but I'm closer, and so I think it'll be really, it'll be really interesting now to do that, to go through that experience again, and to start watching Alec Guinness's. I, I spent a lot of time watching his early work because I was playing him as a you know 20 year old guy. So I watched as many films as I could see of Alec Guinness when he was in his 20s. And now I'll have to watch Alec Guinness's work when he's in his forties, fifties, <laughs> and um, and uh, that, that I'm really looking forward to. And to try and find our Obi Wan Kenobi now to sort of bridge that gap between what I did before and where Alec uh, started the whole thing off in in the seventies. Should I'm, be fun. I, for one, am extremely excited. Um, 
I have a personal question before we get to fan questions because we do have fan questions and I do not want to miss out on that. Fans, Wait. we're extremely excited to ask you everything from what you eat for breakfast to will you do a motorcycle movie um, and is there an album coming? But what I personally want to know, with a little bit of time before production begins, I'm I'm kind of curious, like, what is on your playlist? What's on your watch list? Is there, it's like, is there anything that you're binging um, or are you just like watching stuff to prep for upcoming projects and roles? I, t I tend to watch, I mean, I was watching a lot of stuff from the 70s and 80s because I, I was in the middle of playing Holston. And so I, I, I was sort of focused on that era, Studio 54 and New York in the 70s and 80s. And um, looking at uh, documentaries about the gay scene then, uh, so that was, uh, but the, since things have gone on hold, I've just been on sort of free flow and watching whatever. I was watching some River Phoenix movies um, because I just sort of wanted to look at watch him again, and and I was remembering how beautiful an actor he was, and uh, so I've been watching some of his films, and um, and uh, in preparation for Star Wars, I was been watching the uh, Mandalorian ser series, which I just finished. And I really liked it. And I'm working with Deborah Chow, who directed some of them. She's directing us in the, in in our Hello There movie series. Um, the musical. The musical. <laughs> uh, in a galaxy far, far away is the opening number, but you'll see. It's going to be great. I can't tell you anymore. Um, so, I, and I really liked it. I really, really liked it. I like what they managed to do with that. Um, because it feels so, it's really Star Wars, isn't it? But it's a, but it was like a Western and, and sort of, I really liked the storylines and I liked the, the, the each episode almost stood alone. And I really liked the way it looked. And I was lucky enough to visit when they were shooting, uh, I visited for a, an afternoon just to have a look at that um, technology they were, they were using and it was, it was really nice. It's nice oh. to be there. Oh, that sounds amazing. Okay, okay, okay. I have to ask the fan questions. This is part of my job, okay. very, very important part of my job. Um, all right, so first fan question. Hello there, that's how I'm gonna say it because that's what we're gonna, yeah. that's how we're gonna Hello do there. it. <laughs> You've played a lot of iconic characters and been on a lot of cool motorcycle trips throughout the years. Which character of yours would you want to go on a cross country motorcycle trip with? Um, wow, it's really interesting. It's so funny when you try and remember all of the people you've played, and they all feel quite like like different, like people you knew or something. You just sort of remember them as friends that you that came and went through your life. Um, who would go on a bike trip with me? Uh, it's, can we come so back to it at the end? I got to really think about it. I, I'm not sure that I. Who can it's I hard. It is a hard one. Because also going on a bike trip, I only ever go on big long bike trips with my friend Charlie. So it would feel odd that he wasn't there. So it'd have to be Charlie, me, and X. X, who would be. Oh, well, I tell you what, I'd like to. Christopher Robin would be fun to have along. Because he'd probably be a bit dreary. He'd probably be a bit dreary about it at first and moan and complain about it. But by the end, he'd be really into it, you know. So maybe Christopher Robin. That's 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 appropriate. I, I can yeah. see Christopher, Christopher Robin um, packing his, his saddlebags on his yeah. bike. He'd be on a nice old 1940s motorcycle. And I, I really like those. So th that would be cool. All right. So next question. Are there any personal touches that you have added to your sensational portrayal of Roman Sionis of Birds of Prey that weren't necessarily scripted? Okay, Roman, mm, you did a beautiful job. I like, honestly, I don't like gush over it. I enjoyed that portrayal so very much because it was so fun and so shocking at the same yeah. time. Uh, so I am. I am also very curious if you added some um, panache to the character that wasn't necessarily planned. Yes. 
Well, I mean, the truth is quite quite a lot of the, um, well, for instance, the scene with Journey where I'm showing her around my apartment and I'm showing her the masks and most of that dialogue we just made up as we went along. There was quite a lot of that it was just, <laughs> was just silly. You know, I just, by that point, I was so enjoying playing him that it was all, it was just, you know, all that stuff about, have you been to that? Where is it? I asked her if she's been to the town in Africa. And she goes, no, but I hear it's beautiful. I go, it's dirty. And um, <laughs> all of those kind of things were just, just came up in the moment because uh, I think just because we got with Kathy, we got in a, in a place where we could just play with it like that. And um, most of the stuff with Chris, with Zaz, Zaz, was, was also, most of the beginnings and ends of my scenes with him are totally just us. We did, we did shoot a few scenes that we totally made up that didn't make it into the into the cut, sadly. But we 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 just we just one day we got Kathy to just roll the camera, and we did a game of hide and seek in my apartment. And he he jumped out. You no, know, uh, first of all, uh, first of all, I was hiding, and he catches me. And then I say, okay, I'm gonna. And now he hides, and I close my. And then I walk down, and and I he jumps out at me, and I get a fright and faint to the ground. And he's like, are you all right, boss? You all right? And we just made, and then we did sort of. Um, What's it called? Where you do the wheelbarrow race when you're a kid at school? You know, we did that all around the apartment, and so we did, we we shot quite a lot of stuff that we were just me and him, <laughs> imagining what we might get up to in the apartment when no one's there. But none of it made the film, sadly. But it might be on a reel somewhere. I hope someday it might be on a sort of blooper thing, a blooper reel. Uh, one can only hope that that someday surfaces because we we all. It was to funny. <laughs> yes. Yes. <laughs> yeah. All right. So. What was it like to fill the shoes of the iconic character, Christopher Robin? One oh. of my favorite moments is him and Winnie the Pooh walking through the train station and Pooh asking why, and I have the rest of the question here because it was a very long yeah. question, uh, and Pooh asking, why is that man in a cage? It was the ticket. Oh, yeah. the it ticket was hilarious. Man, yeah, yeah. And tell let him me ask him. Let, let me ask him. Hang on. Wait. What is happening? What did you say? What? Yes, no, no. She wants to know about. She wants to know about when you were saw the ticket master. Do you remember in the thing? No, you can tell me. He's a bit shy, and also he says he hasn't spoken to his agent, and he's not sure whether he's allowed to answer questions. But well, um, thank you for appearing, um, Pooh. Without uh, getting clearance, we really do appreciate you being here. Um, even if you don't say anything. Um, I'm sure we can throw you a couple of things of honey though. If, if yes, find us. he'd appreciate that. He'd appreciate that very much. But in the meantime, I can speak for him. I think he's he's usually fine with that. So, um, what was the actual question though? Uh, what was well, it like to fill the shoes of such an iconic character? It was really lovely because um, again, it was a bit like the opposite of Obi-Wan and where it, with Obi-Wan I had to play a character we did know as an older man and play him as a young man. And this time I had to play somebody we know as a boy, as a child, Christopher Robin, we were we know as a, as a young child, as a man. And so it was the opposite, but it was really fun. And also to play somebody who was, um, who'd lost the spark of ch of youth and childhood in his life and had to be, and had Poo, his good friend Pooh sort of bring it back, you know? I think there was a lot of, people, parents and people maybe in my age group who who neither could use a reminder that, uh, you know, that life's amazing and fun. And it's, it's, it's hard, you know, when you've got responsibilities and I, I can, I could relate to him, but um, it was, it was a nice storyline to play, a nice arc to play. Cause by the end of it, he remembers the sort of beauty of, of um, his imagination and his childhood self, you know? I think we have to put you away now. Okay, he's going to go now. But he's going to say bye bye. Bye. <laughs> there we are. He's never far away, you see, Pooh. He's always, once once he's your friend, he's really your friend. He's there yeah. always. He's nice. Pooh. All right, so really next nice. question. Oh, Pooh. Ah, I got it. I'm not crying. You're crying. Um. So. 
Was the idea of coming back to play Obi-Wan after 15 years more daunting or exciting or a bit of both? Just exciting, really. Um, and it's been, it's, been, uh, it's been being thought about by me and about by the people who are going to make it for quite a long time. We weren't allowed to tell anybody and there was all this, spec all this mounting speculation about whether it was gonna happen or not. And then um, I wasn't allowed to say, cause you know, they're very secretive about such things, but it was getting embarrassing. You know, people were starting to speculate where they thinking of someone else to play the part. And I had to see all this stuff and just keep my mouth shut. You know, like they were maybe considering other actors to play them and stuff. I was thinking, I'd love to be able to say that we're doing it, please people. Can we do it now? But um, we had to wait. And it was fun to announce it last year when we did. Um, but I'm not, I don't have any nerves about doing it. I'm just excited about it really. Cause I think, I th really think I'm, like I say, I'm really excited. I really think there's, there's something quite exciting about playing a character that you know and love from before, from another part in your life. Now it'd be just quite interesting to do. Okay. I think it should be good fun. Ah, we are all very excited. All right. One of my favorite films you star in is Moulin Rouge. Also, Mine too. Uh, you have an incredible voice. So my question for you is, have you any interest in taking on another musical? We've already said that. Clearly you're doing Obi-Wan Kenobi. Hello there, the musical. Hello there, but, the musical. That's right, that's right. <laughs> if yeah. in real life, would, would you do another musical? Yes, I would love to. I loved, I did, I've done two musicals in my life. I did Moulin Rouge, and then I did Guys and Dolls on stage in London, on the West End stage, and I, there, there, there's something incredible about doing a musical, there's something very special about it. Telling a story with music is um, it's so powerful. I mean, for you and for the audience, and especially on stage, that sort of, the combination of that can be is so, you know, there's an amazing experience going to watch a musical in a theater. And when you're on stage, it's just a great, a great, um, experience all round, very powerful to, if, you, if you're saying, I love you to someone with dialogue, but then if you're singing I Love You to someone with song, it's just, it takes those emotions and it makes it um, more powerful. I think it hits the audience in a different place emotionally, you know? So it's quite exciting to be part of that. I just haven't, I, it's not that I haven't, um, I haven't been offered any. <laughs> it's just waiting to be, <laughs> it's not like um, I've been really I'm picky. Right or, in the musical now. <laughs> I just haven't, I haven't been offered any, I don't think any. So hello there is gonna be great. Oh, with those big chorus numbers, well, stormtroopers, those are going to be great. And um, kick, turn, turn. Sorry. Kick, kick, turn, turn. Opening right, numbers. Exactly. Yeah, I know those old-fashioned aerial shots with all the stormtroopers in this rain pool going round and round, which that should be good fun too. So anyway, I'm giving away too much. I shouldn't. I shouldn't give away any more about hello there, the musical. That's enough. Um, I would love to do another one. I really would. I would. And I'm. I quite. I'm quite interested to take. You know, to, to, I've, I always thought there must be a sort of modern day musical. And I remember there was a brilliant film called um, Hedwig and the Angry Inch that came out round about the same time as Moulin Rouge. And I thought that's, or maybe just after Moulin Rouge, and I thought that's sort of a modern, that's the future of musicals where you take a story, where you take any subject and um, you, you don't have set pieces or whatever. It's just part of the, the music is part of the dialogue, part of the storytelling. I think there must be, there, there are traditional musicals on stage and there are mov musical movies that are made like that. But I think there must be a new kind of musical movie and I, I'm excited that we, sh we should explore that somehow and find out what that is, you know. Uh, in a galaxy. But, oh, like, uh, like Once, do you remember that? Did you see that film Once? Yes. The Irish film Once? Well, that that was a sort of modern musical too. And I, I would love to do something like that in that vein. I think that would be cool. We want it. And that's just the truth. Uh, and last fan question. Is there one okay. thing that throughout your career is a source of inspiration? Such a good question to end on. Yes. Look, the truth is that my biggest inspiration throughout my career would be my uncle, Dennis, who's an actor, who was in all the Star Wars films too, in fact. He, or the first, the original three, he played Wedge. Wedge Antilles, he was an X-Wing pilot. Um, but I had, uh, uh, alongside his, uh, roles in Star Wars, an amazing career, and it was a great um, 
singer and uh, was was in many great musicals in the West End um, and a great movie actor. And he's my inspiration. He's always been, he's always the actor I looked up to the most. And when I was a kid, um, wanted to be like, and um, and that's still the same today. I, I, he's still really my, if I ever got in a situation on set where I was stuck or I didn't know, there's only one person I would call to speak to about it. It would be Dennis, really. Oh, I love that. I, I, oh. Okay, yeah. second time. I'm not crying. You're crying. Um, well, thank you so much for making this, great. For this. This was amazing. Um, cool. For all the fans out there who are watching this, don't forget Ace is going to be helping. Uh, you with a little bit more of you and McGregor. That's right. Ace has launched a new autograph send in service where you can send in your own item to be signed by you and himself, or you can purchase an autograph uh, on available items via Ace's featured partners. So you can head on over to acecomiccon.com for more information and be sure to check out our featured partner pages for available items, pricing, and more. Um, but I just, if this doesn't make you want to get something signed by you and I don't know, just, I just, that in a musical, I just want a musical. <laughs> we'll work on it. I'll, I'll speak to everyone, I'll speak to everyone over in Lucasfilm and Disney and I'm sure we can find some, we'll find some way to turn it into a musical, I'm sure. I mean, I feel yeah. like with the musical episode. So. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Uh, thank you, that was fun, that was good. Good luck and I'll see you soon. Yeah, I hope one day we can do all these signings and we tell the people that we could do them in person one day. I look forward to it. Awesome. All right, cool. Thank you so much. Take care.